Hi, I'm Smart Bastard. In the last devlog we created a pretty basic world made up of different hex types, but we actually had no way of interacting with it other than to move the camera around. So the next thing on the list is to create our first unit that moves on the map, the player. Unfortunately our great hex tiles don't come with any assets for the units, and I had real trouble finding any third party resources that actually fits with the existing tiles. Uh, this means the only real option I had was to actually create one for myself, at least for now. Since I'm still not certain about the size of a player's party and exactly what I want to represent, I thought a simple flag design might be best. My first attempt at this was a simple image made in paint.net, but when I added them to the map they just looked wrong. Um, a bit cartoony, almost. And so, although it was outside my comfort zone, I decided to borrow a graphics tablet and try my hand at this whole arty thing using GIMP. Uh, this surprisingly actually turned out better than I was expecting, and fits a little bit better with the current aesthetic. However, it is still far from perfect, as it makes the game look a bit too much like an old Total War title, so I will keep my eye out for a proper asset pack that fits with these tiles. Uh, if you know of one, please let me know in the comments, it would be actually quite helpful. It would definitely be nice to have unit markers that actually convey to the player how much of a threat or opportunity another unit was rather than simply pointing out where something is, uh, which is all the flags are really doing at the moment. But moving on, now that we have something on the map, uh, the next step was to have a way to select the hexes and various units, which is harder than it looks. Unlike with square tiles, I, I can't just compare where a mouse click happens and the world coordinates of the hexes because the hexes overlap and are also in staggered rows, so they don't translate one to one. But after once again finding some dodgy code from an ancient website, I was able to jury rig a selection system that actually works. It's a fairly useful accomplishment, as finding a hex based on screen location will surely play an important part in all sorts of other future systems. But after adding it in, I got a little bit distracted, as one thing had been annoying me for a while, which was the player profile menu. Every time I loaded the game to test a feature I just couldn't think of why the profile image is useful to the player all the time, or even their name. You just don't need to see it every time you're using the screen. So I've removed it for now, and spent a little bit of time adding in a new game menu screen instead, which lets us control the world seed and set the player name. Uh, not that we can see it anymore. I know it might be a bit blank now, but I'm sure we'll fill it up before long. Finally. With the player marker and selection system added, I got back on track and was able to actually add in a mouse and keyboard movement for the player. You can now select and deselect the player by either left clicking on them or by pressing space. When you're controlling the player, the camera centers on them and will also now allow movement by either using the W, E, A, D, Z and X keys, which is one for each of the six directions of the travel, or by right clicking on a tile. Uh, doing so first selects the tile and doing it again will actually move the character. Hopefully this will prevent any accidental movement. Uh, but this is it. Finally we've actually got something that moves around the map. Almost like it's a real game. Now I won't lie, I did mess around with this new freedom for a little too long, but afterwards I thought I would build on it a little and add in a stamina system. Uh, this was actually fairly simple to do, so now every unit will have a simple stamina value and also how much stamina it costs to move through a particular type of hex. Couple this with a new end turn button, which resets a unit's stamina back to their maximum and also reduces their supplies by one, we have a fully fledged movement system. I know watching it in action feels a little bit stop and go, since you can't move through multiple tiles in one movement, but I assure you this is intentional. I'm imagining that each time you move a new dialogue would show up providing information about the hex and other actions a player can take while they're there, such as resting, foraging and exploring further. I also think random encounters will occur frequently, again giving players something to do before clicking the move button again. In the future there is also a lot of logic I'll be hooking into this new end of turn system, as that will be when the other parts of the world get updated, uh, like AI units moving around the world. And in theory, almost nothing but the player, camera and GUI will actually be updated between the turns, which should mean we can do some pretty beefy simulations if we want to, without having to worry too much about the frame rate uh, between turn ends. As ever, there's still plenty to do, but I think I'm going to return to doing a bit more world gen next. Specifically, I'd like to be able to make the coast a little bit prettier with some beaches, and also make it so the player can't spawn in the middle of an ocean, uh, which unfortunately is currently possible. But 
it wouldn't hurt to add some rivers either. And that's all I have to show for now. So until next time, ta-da!